Hi, I'm Joel Jones from Jonesy's Auto Restoration in Ridgefield, Washington, and I'm here to tell you how to build a paint booth. Well, first off, I'm not going to recommend that you build a paint booth in your garage. There are just too many hazards involved with it. You've got fire concerns, you've got chemical concerns, you've got um, what about your neighbors, I mean countless things. There are county regulations, there are government regulations that prevent you from doing this. And I would never ever recommend that you build a paint booth for your own use in your house or your shop or your garage. With that said, there are some things that are generic that you would need to know if you were going to buy a commercially uh, produced paint booth. And there are also some questions that you need to ask yourself as to, okay, how am I going to solve these problems that are associated with a paint booth? And the problems are airflow, compressed air, heat, and electricity. So the key to a successfully operating paint booth is airflow in and airflow out in terms of volume of air that's going across in the room needs to be a, a substantial amount of air. Commercially designed booths are in the realm of 12,000 CFM. Um, in order to get 12,000 CFM, you need a substantial amount of power, which is not really available in uh, any kind of a residential uh, area. So you need to really figure out whether or not your shop has the, uh, the power requirements um, to run a fan that's going to produce 12,000 CFM. Furthermore, the airflow has to come from somewhere. So are you going to vent the paint booth outside? Um, where's the exhaust ducting going to go? Is it going to go up straight through the roof? Is it going to go out the end of the building? All of these things are, are serious concerns that will dramatically affect the performance of your paint booth. Good thing for you, there are some fairly cost-effective ways to buy a pre-manufactured paint booth. Um, like the one behind me, it's a, it was a, a pre-manufactured panel that they send you, they freight it to you, and then you can assemble it and put it into your shop, assuming you have all of the requirements and everything thought through. So my paint booth that I purchased is what's called a semi-downdraft paint booth. And what that means is that the airflow comes through these air intake filters in the roof of the booth and then flows through the booth and then out the exhaust filters at the end of the booth. Okay, a less expensive booth um, is what's called a cross draft booth and the filters, the air intake filters would be positioned in the end of the booth where the doors are and the exhaust filters are at the end of the booth where they are now. Um, for do-it-yourselfers home people, you know, a cross draft booth is going to do, do really well. Basically, dust, if it can stay suspended in the air, it's not going to land in your paint job. And so if you have a lot of, of airflow going across your car, then the dust and the dirt is not going to actually settle onto it. So therefore, if you have airflow, that's more important than whether it's a full downdraft booth, whether it's a cross flow booth or so on and so forth. You can see the whole filter bank for exhaust filters. Now, these come in different sizes. They come in blankets. Um, these are standard uh, 20 by 20 exhaust filters. Do not use regular furnace filters for either your intake or your exhaust. Buy the correct filters for your booth. If you don't do that, then you're going to have dust contamination problems a lot. Um, how are you going to hang your parts in your booth? So we've just got some basic hangers that we can pull in and pull out um, that we hang from the ceiling of the booth. And we use welding wire, which is a very, very fine wire to hang parts from. So uh, you need to think about how you're going to design that. You need to make sure that you have enough compressed air to run spray guns. Spray guns, I mean, you're going to be spraying for potentially a couple of hours and your compressor is going to be running nonstop that pretty much that whole entire time when you're spraying because you're going around the car and then you're going around the car again spraying two or three coats and you have to have a compressor to uh, be able to keep up with that. 
So out here is where we have the actual control panel for the booth. This uh, controls the exhaust fan, the air intake fan, and the heat for the booth. In addition, we have a, a gauge right here, which allows me to equalize the pressure inside and outside of the booth. So when all of the doors are shut, um, you want to have an equal pressure because you don't want to be pulling the door shut with all the vacuum that's created by your exhaust fan. So in addition to this, I have a fire suppression system um, and there's a main fire uh, activation pin right here as well as some heads inside the booth that if things catch on fire, if uh, some of those fumes get ignited, then um, the booth will kick in the fire suppression and it will, it will put it out. Um, like I said before in this video, you really should think twice about building your own booth. The cost of these booths has come down substantially um, in price and there are actually some pretty good values out there uh, from online suppliers and local suppliers. So I would really, really advise you to look at how much is it going to cost to actually do the booth, how much is it going to cost to paint the car yourself versus having somebody else do it, and what are you going to do with the booth when you're not painting cars? So with that in mind, do your research and really put in the time it takes to make the right decision on whether you should build a booth, buy a booth, or do any of it at all.